Analysts are skeptical on Nordstrom. I think you're in that basket. You write Nordstrom is a no-growth retailer and that it should trade at a low P.E. So you're not a buyer on this uh, big surge today. Well, you know, Nordstrom is a great retailer, but they've been going through some challenges. And I think the reason the stock is up, they've done a great job of controlling expenses and also controlling inventory. And so you know, the market's been very skeptical, so we're seeing a nice little rebound here, but it might take a little bit longer for that sales trend to turn around. That's why we really don't think there's a lot of upside from this point, you know, where we're at today. What about L Brands? Well, you know, L Brands is another situation where they need to turn around the Victoria's Secret brand. And, you know, Courtney just made the point that even, you know, into August, you know, the trends haven't quite shown the type of improvement that Wall Street wants to see. And I think that's why you're seeing the reaction that the stock is having this morning. These are both, uh, both mall-based, uh, or to a large extent are. I mean, can they actually work against the big trend that seems to be so powerful? Yeah, I, I mean, I think they can. If you look at Dick's Sporting Goods today, obviously Dick's Sporting Goods is talking much more positively. I think there's some company-specific issues that both companies are working through. And, you know, there's still opportunity for both to recover, but it's just, you know, it's not clear right now when that will happen. Oliver, hope for Victoria's Secret. Still comping pretty negatively. I know they got rid of their fashion show. They hired a transgender model. I, it seems like they've got a lot of work to turn this around. Yeah, there's a lot of work that does need to be done at Victoria's Secret. A lot of what's happening with the future of the consumer is body positivity, inclusivity, really reinventing the business model. More broadly speaking, Sarah, it's an incredible time in retail. The winners are taking more share, and we're much more cautious on the mall. The mall includes LB as well as Macy's and others. Who are the winners in this environment? Walmart, Target, Costco. And as you think about that, you know, food is your friend. You need to eat groceries, and food is insulated from tariffs. Scale is important, too, as we continue to see this digital revolution take place. And consumers are really rethinking retail. They just don't need as much stuff anymore, either. <laughs> Uh, this is true. Oliver, um, I've seen, I know, totally anecdotal, but on Nordstrom, they're putting very, very small footprint stores in Manhattan. How much success yeah. can they have recreating what others have done in urban areas? Yeah, we really actually think that's a very powerful, creative way. It's called Nordstrom Local. Nordstrom has a local market strategy. So they'll have a flagship with little Nord Nordstrom Local stores in neighborhoods, such as the West Village, the Upper East Side. And these are great points in terms of going on to try on items, buying online, pick up in store, as well as getting alterations done. The future of retail is a lot about service. And Nordstrom Local helps you return items quickly and really leverages inventory in a very local way close to your home. So that is something to be watched. And that's a brighter spot at Nordstrom. Courtney was spot on with Nordstrom having unique challenges in key items and the promotional environment as well. So there's a mixed picture there. But Nordstrom Local means a lot for the future of retail, also with speed. Product in retail and fashion expires very quickly. So they have to get the product returned quickly, and Nordstrom Local helps there as well. Jay, who's winning back to school? I know it's early. You know, uh, you know, Kohl's talked about having a really nice start to August. You know, they have a big back to school business. Um, you know, they would be one that has started off in a really nice way. Really? They, I, they had a lousy quarter, though. And well, you know, what's interesting, if you break up the like it. Sarah, if you break up the quarter into two parts, you know, the first half of the quarter is very weak. But the back half of the quarter, they comped up positive one and without having to promote. And what they said in August, they've seen that trend continue. So, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of retailers have had a struggle in 2Q and in, in, in the beginning of 3Q. But relatively speaking, Kohl's has been a little bit better. Hey, Oliver, Jim Cramer called you out yeah. this morning during our mad dash about some work you've done on Tiffany, I think specific to Chinese consumers. Tell us what you found. Yeah, we are more cautious on Tiffany. We love the long-term story. We have an outperform rating. However, a lot of factors are up against a tough comparison. Our survey results do indicate caution with traffic trends. Hong Kong is another negative point in incoming Chinese tourism. So these are all fear factors in terms of traffic. And Tiffany is also somewhat vulnerable to foreign exchange as well, with the flagship being an important part of the business. So we're looking more forward to the back half, and we're cautious coming to the print for next week. We're more positive on Ulta for back to school. We like beauty. We also think there's a good jeans trend, and American Eagle has a very good denim offering. So those are two retailers that we're excited about. And this athleisure versatile dressing trend continues to be true as customers you know love that athletic trend so that's something for we're watching for back to school as well 
Yeah, I mean, Stiefel actually had a good note on it. They did a sneaker survey today and showed that Nike and Vans continue to be the top picks for, for kids going back yeah, to school. Yeah, I mean, suits and sneakers and rethinking what it means to be formal, the transformation of business, desk to dusk. Um, the whole apparel landscape is clearly changing. And don't forget about re-commerce in the circular economy. People are buying used goods and loving it as well. Jay, what's, what's your pick in sort of that athleisure space? Well, you know, don't forget about Skechers. You know, Skechers is the third largest footwear company in the world. You know, it's been called, by, by, called out by different retailers so far as having one of the strongest back-to-school assortments and nice sell-through. Um, it's a global business, so they do have some exposure to tariffs, but they're able to offset that because over half their business is outside of the U.S. So, you know, and the, and the stock has come in a little bit, so the valuation here looks pretty attractive. You know, we think Skechers is a nice play for back-to-school.